Great. Well, thank you. Happy New Year. Uh, welcome to the Roaring 2020s um, on this. So for all you students taking notes, uh, great. And for all of you folks who are not students, but were here either last night at the public meeting or just here to listen for the first time, you might as well be taking notes too because it will be well worthwhile for educational purposes and, and for things coming up in the future. Uh, this is actually uh, probably the second or third time that uh, we've been able to present to the class, so we're really fortunate that we've been invited by um, Robert to come speak on behalf of the Restore Our Creek Coalition. I'm just going to give you just a quick overview of our group and where we got to we got, and then turn it over to Elizabeth to really go through um, the presentation. So for many of you, if you're not familiar with the Restore Our Creek Coalition, um, we are a citizens group that began in 2015. Um, we had an interest and a desire to be a part of the, um, the, the design and, and looking what happens with the consent decree once the stakeholders um, started to work on uh, the consent decree, work towards completion of much of the, the cleanup in Butte. But we also, more importantly, had an interest in restoring Silver Bow Creek. For many of you who are not from Butte, from around here, um, Silver Bow Creek actually began up near where the Berkeley Pit was and extended down into the Clark Fork River and part of the um, Columbia River Basin. So for us, it was really important that we wanted to see the first mile of Silver Bow Creek restored to be a part of that whole Columbia River Basin ecosystem to ensure that not only um, for communities downstream, but more importantly for our community here, that we had a restored Silver Bow Creek for the enjoyment of our community for generations to come and also to be a part of the economic development um, that was part of the cleanup plan. So we had three pieces to the mission of the Restore Our Creek. The first was to remove the tailings, the second was to restore the creek, and the third was to be able to create a greenway for public enjoyment. And the area that we were really concentrating on is between Texas Avenue and Montana Street. And so we really started to rally the community, and this is a very community, public-based organization. I can say that um, you know, we have been very fortunate that we had a very simple message. We were able to take it out to the public, and the public has really embraced this vision and the mission, not only with many of the citizens who grew up here with generations, but we also have tomorrow's generation uh, being a part of us. And so, you know, we do have a, a high school student with us um, who's been, you know, very much a part of the Restore Creek. And so this is something for the community. You know, because we've started off with a lot of public information, we've done field trips, We've done a lot of discussions with a lot of the stakeholders with the consent decree, which includes BP Arco, Butte Silver Bow, the state of Montana, um, and, and trying to really work together toward this vision. And we really do appreciate uh, the coordination uh, that we and the dialogue that we've been able to have uh, with and including EPA, excuse me, uh, to be able to look at this vision. And I think through our positive messaging and the discussions that we had, EPA was really able to take a look at what it is that we wanted to do and begin to incorporate some of those ideas into their design plans. Um, when Doug Benevento, who used to be the Region 8 uh, Regional Administrator for EPA, was here and beginning to talk about the consent decree and what it meant and how we can incorporate this, one of the things he did was to hold up a book that we had prepared with over a thousand people from our community over the course of six months to develop a conceptual plan for a Silver Bowl Creek Headwaters Park that went from Texas down to Montana Avenue. And one of the concerns that we had with remedy of this whole entire area was could a restored creek be a part of all of that? And when he held up that book, he said nothing in the remedy should preclude the restoration of the creek. And as we continue those discussions, many of the members of our coalition said, well, we want to be sure. We need proof that it can occur. And so through that discussion, we were very fortunate to be able to uh, work with the EPA to obtain a grant, which was actually provided to CTEC, 
uh, the com community citizens, the citizens technical education committee, environmental. environmental committee, excuse me. So they were actually um, the administrator of a bill of a grant that was then provided to WET to be able to complete a review of the current information that was out there to make a determination <coughs> whether or not it was feasible to be able to restore Silver Bow Creek along with the remedy that is being proposed through the consent decree on that one. Um, you know, we really appreciate the ability to have this grant, to be able to work with the stakeholders on this. And what we're gonna present to you through Elizabeth's presentation are those findings. I'm gonna hand out an executive summary. Uh, <coughs> we are just completing the draft report. We're hoping to have that done here uh, within the next two weeks, 10 to 14 days. And then that'll be out for a complete review. But I'm going to turn it over because I'd really like to just get really involved into that. We're going to have a little bit of time for some questions afterwards. But I know that when the CD does come out, we don't have an idea of when that is yet. But to be you know, very aware of what it is that we're looking for, taking a look at the CD, what's in it, how does it work, and we're going to be continuing on with our message being able to make this a reality for our community. All right, and with that introduction, I think I'm going to move up here at the front. Um, so, as Jocelyn said, um, we did, a, it, this is an engineering review of um, the remedy that is proposed for this area, for this corridor and possible creek alignments that could go through there. And just to make sure that the remedy doesn't preclude uh, putting a, a creek in this area. This, I want to just point out this, this picture. Um, you may recognize the East Ridge in the back. This is from the study that Jocelyn was talking about, where they visualized a restored Silverboat Creek in that corridor. So you can kind of see the the mine uh, back in this area, and then and then we have this restored creek with vegetation and trees and, and everything in the corridor. So um, we thought that would be a good good picture to use on the on the front page of this of this presentation. Um, and it was so good, I used it twice. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the pro the purpose of this project really was to take a look at the proposed work out there. And, and what we could do as far as uh, putting a creek in this corridor and try to see if um, the creek could be done with the proposed remedy that is, is um, uh, for this corridor. And that, the bulk of that proposed remedy are stormwater ponds, which we'll see in a minute. Um, we had a series of criteria that we had to meet um, on this project. And one of them is, is that the creek would be lined um, so that contaminated groundwater beneath where the creek would go doesn't contact the clean water that's in the creek. Um, that the creek rely on gravity flow to the greatest extent possible. And we were looking at a target flow of about 10 CFS, which is about the average daily flow of Black Hill Creek, to give you some context. Um, also, that this was a review um, and, and not, uh, so, we, so we weren't coming up with new data, we were reviewing data that was already out there. And um, the review would actually assess the feasibility of, of maintaining a meandering character for the creek alignment. And um, there is a series of infrastructural challenges, which we'll talk about uh, today. And, and so we looked at what, are, what were some ways that we could overcome some of those obstacles that are along the alignment? Um, there's, oh, sorry, private land issues also. Um, so not all of the land in, in this area is public. So those, that's an issue. And then to take all of those review, review entities and do sort of a rough cost estimate, plus or minus 25%, um, and, and give an idea of how much it may cost to do a creek in this area. Um, so project alternatives. What, what this is, is we looked at three, really two different alignments for the creek um, that were feasible coming down the corridor. We'll have a map 
here, and we'll just move to the map, and I can kind of talk you through it. So this yellow line here is the existing Silver Bow Creek Channel, which is used to route stormwater right now. So that was one of the, the uh, alignments that we looked at. Um, the other alignment is a little hard to see with the, with the green on this map, but uh, it kind of runs, you can see this meandering uh, uh, line here, and then it, it comes to right about Pi Avenue, and then, so there's two alignments for that. We call this one 1A and 1B, because basically they're the same in, until we get to Caw Street, then one goes south into um, Blacktail Creek, and the other one goes to the north and, and uh, connects with Silver Bow Creek. So those were the three alignments that we looked at. Um, I might back up just for, for uh, context for this class. Last night, um, mostly residents of Butte that kind of know the history of Silver Bow Creek. You, you guys might not know as much, so I'm, I'm just gonna back up a little bit and, and talk about that. Um, so Silver Bow Creek mining actually began on Silver Bow Creek in 1864 with placer mining. Um, so there has been a lot of activity on this creek over the years. Um, at one point, there were eight smelters sited along this creek. Um, two of them, we're, we're right now, will be part of the cleanup in this CD. One of them is uh, the parrot tailings removal up in this area, and then just right across Montana Street here is the heat reduction works um, smelter. So uh, lots of uh, work along this creek. It's been channeled, re-channeled, moved, dammed, uh, obliterated, covered in tailings, covered in slag. <laughs> it's, it's, I would guess, probably the most abused creek there could be out there. Um, and then in 1955, we started with the Berkeley Pit, which is, sits right up here in the headwaters of the creek, and the Berkeley Pit actually cuts off the headwaters of the creek. So um, it, it, is, it has had a much, uh, a long history of um, industrial use, let's say. Um, so we looked at these three uh, different alignments, uh, well, let's say two different alignments. Um, Again, A and B use the same corridor until Caw Avenue. Uh, 1B is the one that turns to the north, crossing George Street and connecting in with the uh, existing Silver Bow Creek Channel. Um, and, and this alternative, as I said before, already has its routing stormwater, which is part of the remedy here. Um, and it also has a, a subdrain below it that collects um, contaminated groundwater, which is also part of the remedy here, um, and, and follows a, a utility corridor really for views. Um, so there is a lot of infrastructure in this corridor. Uh, one of the things that, that uh, we needed to do with this review was to make sure that whatever alignment we looked at didn't interfere with remedy. So because of how much uh, uh, remedial elements there were along this alignment, um, we said this, this uh, is less feasible at this time than some of the other alignments that we looked at. Um, so alternative um, two, um, uh, I, 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 you know what, I think I messed up. This is 1B was actually that one that turns to the north and hooks into Silver Bow Creek. And again, you know, when we start getting into that Silver Bow Creek channel, there's a lot of infrastructure and, and uh, interference with remedy. And so uh, it, was, it was deemed less feasible. And um, so basically what we ended up with is alternative 1A as being the most feasible of the alternatives. And this is the one that turns to the south and goes into Blacktail Creek, um, just south of the KOA. Um, and to look to do the uh, analysis on this corridor, we actually broke it into five reaches. Um, the first reach goes from Shields Avenue to Harrison Avenue, um, then from Harrison to Casey Street, Casey to George, George to Caw, and Caw to Black Hill Creek. So I've got a series of uh, maps here that we'll look at and kind of look at what the issues are moving down through the, the corridor. Uh, so this is sort of the first half of reach one. Um, wherever you see a box like this, and what we're doing is highlighting some, some uh, considerations that we need to look at for a restored creek in this area. Um, 
first thing I'd like to point out on this is so, so this is the county shops, um, and if you've been paying attention to uh, CD negotiations and, and, well, not too much CD negotiations, but parrot removal, um, the county shops are actually being moved, and the second part of the parrot tailings waste removal project is underneath these county shops here. So that old smelter that I talked about has a bunch of waste slag um, and tailings that are underneath this county shop. So we're going to move this, dig those up, and, and um, this will be all clean in this area. Um, Butte Silver Bow, this is Butte Silver Bow property, and when they did the end land use design for this property, they actually left a little corridor, this green area here, um, that could be used to uh, restore a creek in this area. So you see that's, that was where we did the conceptual design for this creek. Um, in this area, what this would be the start of the creek. Um, we have a, a lot, again, a lot of infrastructure in this area. This here is those elevated, that elevated rail line that you see right uh, near the mine. So it is the, the trains that go in and out of MR. So it is um, active at this time. So we're very close to that active rail yard. So we have to be cognizant of that in any kind of a creek realignment. Um, also, this purple line here is what we call the Horseshoe Bend effluent line. So right now, water from the uh, treatment plant is, is uh, routed in this line down to the confluence, um, so down towards Montana Street, and put back into the creek. Um, this is one of the uh, possible sources of water to this creek. So this is treated water, clean water. Um, and it could, the thought is, is that maybe it could be put in up here instead of down, down, for, down the corridor. Uh, the other thing I can point out here is uh, the Silver Lake line. So Silver Lake, the Silver Lake line actually provides water to the mine um, and has, there, there is a tap right here. Um, and that is another uh, source that's been thrown out there as, as water to this creek. So the defining the actual source of water to the creek was beyond this project. But I just point out, you know, some of the ones that have been talked about in this in this upper corridor. Um, so this is what it looks like here. Um, the one crossing that we would have. This is Civic Center Road. Um, so this goes down. The Civic Center sits down in here, um, and so there would we would also have to cross the road here. We want to be very cognizant of any time we're crossing utilities, we've got to go above or below them or reroute them. So um, those are those are some of the considerations in this reach. Um, this is the second part of reach one and the top part of reach two. Um, Civic Center sits right here. Again, here's those uh, county shop um, buildings. And here's our green corridor ends about there. Um, one of the things that we wanted to be cognizant of also is most of the ADA parking for the Civic Center is on that side of the Civic Center. So we really want to make sure that we don't encroach on that parking and reduce in any way you know, parking for the Civic Center because that's, that's very much needed. Um, the other things that we have in this area is there's a, um, a, a cell tower right here. Um, so, in, and you can see it's kind of on the other side of the creek here. We need to make sure that access is maintained to that. Um, there's all kinds of stormwater and <coughs> different infrastructure in this corridor. Um, the locomotive sits right there. Um, and then we have to go under Harrison Avenue, which is, is a big obstacle. This is probably um, the, one of the bigger obstacles to this corridor alignment. Um, there is an underpass under uh, um, Harrison Avenue right now, uh, which has stormwater running in a pipe in one half of it and, an, and a walking trail in the other half of it. And so a uh, couple of different things that we looked at to get under Harrison Avenue, maybe utilization of that underpass or actually boring under the street. But again, also um, Harrison Avenue is a, is a major utility corridor also. So there's there's a lot of considerations to, be, to think about in that area. Um, in this area, we've got private property up to the edge on, on both sides here. Um, I'll just move down to the next, to the next reach we can look at. Um, 
something. You know, so, so what we're looking at here is a possible alignment that goes on private property on both sides, um, depending on you know whether that could it could be straightened. There's there's a couple of different ways to get through this area also, but those are considerations through there. And again, every time you cross, you know, you're crossing all of these utilities that run along this corridor. Um, uh, here's a, another street crossing and more utilities, a big stormwater line that comes in here. So we have a lot of infrastructure in this corridor. Um, once we get down into this area, um, so this to kind of orient you, if you know where Baker Auto is, sits right in here. KOA sits kind of down in here. Um, there is a set aside um, for the uh, proposed remedy um, that could also incorporate this creek route. So that's what you're seeing here kind of in, in the orange color. Um, what we've done is superimpose the conceptual plan for remedy on top of the aerial photo for this area. So you see these are some of the stormwater ponds that are proposed as part of the uh, remedy in this area. And then this is proposed as tree right now. This is a, is a, um, basically a parking lot for Baker Auto. Um, so there's, there's, again, private property issues. Um, we've got a major stormwater line coming out in here. Um, and then this, you see this alignment moves around some private, there's some private property and some utility road property in that area. Um, so those are a few of the considerations there. Um, from there, we cross, this is Cot Avenue here. Um, so the, the uh, alignment comes across uh, Cot Avenue, so there, there's another crossing there moves down um, across by that wetlands. This is Blacktail Creek here, so we're just south of the KOA and, and hooks into Blacktail Creek in this area. Um, so we talked to, on the, on the map, talked about these, but we're just, I'll just go over them really quickly here. So we have multiple uh, street crossings as we move down through the corridor, Civic Center Road, Harrison Avenue, Casey, George, and uh, Kaw Avenue. Um, we will have multiple crossings of the Silver Lake line. Um, Silver Lake line is a 34-inch uh, steel pipe. Um, it's ESB infrastructure and pro um, provides uh, water, continuous water supply to Montana resources of about um, up to uh, 4 million gallons a day. Um, it was constructed in the 1970s and uh, there's a pump station out at near Ramsey and using the pump station they can get up to about 14 million gallons a day in that, in that line. Um, and the nearest shut-up valve, there's several taps through town but the nearest shut-up valve is at that Ramsey pump station. Um, the horseshoe bend, so this is uh, that, that effluent line that I talked about. It's a 24 inch diameter uh, HDPE pipe and can transmit up to 10 million gallons a day of treated water. Right now they're doing much less than that, but um, but think that they can do about 10 million <coughs> gallons once, they're, when, once everything's up and going. Um, and it's part of the uh, compliance plan for deep mine flooding and um, it's a, uh, it's a remedial structure. So this is something that we can't interfere with. Um, one of the big issues in this corridor is just the elevation drop. Uh, it's, it's very flat. So you can see slopes for each of the reaches here. Um, as you can see, we're not even at 1% slope coming down through this corridor. So one of the things that we will have to do is really make sure um, that, that we're looking and thinking about those elevations as we're trying to uh, construct a gravity flow stream down through this area. Um, you'll notice this reach four, so this was, that was the reach that goes near Baker Auto, is very flat in that, in that area. Um, the, the one thing to point out though is there's going to be quite a bit of construction in this area and up in reach one with the, with the final removal of the parrot, and we will have some control on you know, what kind of elevations are left um, from those projects. So one of the things we looked at was you know, some possible uh, coordination between those projects and 
you know, leaving, leaving an elevation um, structure that would be conducive to putting a, a creek through there. Um, so, con other considerations, we talked a little bit about uh, all of the utilities that are in that corridor um, and, and how many crossings, there's quite a few crossings and crossings of that uh, original um, uh, Silver Bowl Creek channel that's now used for stormwater. Um, and then, uh, it, you know, this, this requirement that we not interfere with, with remedy features. Um, again, multiple private property issues. Um, the other, the one issue we didn't talk a little, uh, too much about is shallow groundwater. Um, I've got a map I'll show you in, in a bit, but there are some issues with shallow groundwater further down in the corridor. Um, that railroad, that elevated railroad up above, we've got to make sure that we you know, meet all of those railroad setbacks. And then, um, fine, not final, but another consideration is, is that because um, this channel is not connected into the groundwater and not in, into the ground, we may have problems with seasonal freezing of it. Um, so a, a requirement for some other alternate discharge line, which we which we have right now in that effluent line, um, but but we would have to have some alternative to to deal with um, channel freezing. All right. So this is the map I promised you on shallow groundwater issues. So in the red that you see down at the bottom here, um, we have groundwater in that area at, and this is, this is compared to a high groundwater year of uh, July of 2018, but in this red, we have groundwater at less than five feet below the ground surface. And so that, that is a concern in that this has to be a line channel and if we have groundwater shallower than that, we may float the liner um, for, the, for the creek. So that becomes a concern um, in, the, in that area. Um, all right, so with that, we'll move on to some costs. Um, so we did some cost estimations for each reach. We'll talk about those first. Um, and I, I showed you all of the uh, considerations in that upper court, upper uh, reach. So this is reach one from Shields to Harrison. And basically this is our most expensive reach. We have quite a few things to deal with here that Harrison Avenue crossing, Civic Center Road crossing, um, the Civic Center parking lot, <coughs> two crossings of Silver Lake, uh, two crossings of the effluent line, possible utility reroute to replacement costs, and then what we did is calculated um, general construction activities. I'll show you kind of what went into that uh, in our, in our uh, main budget. But basically what we did is, this is construction of the creek and moving of dirt and, and all of those costs. And what we did is just prorated them for the length of each of the segments, but each of the reaches as we move down through here. So um, we're estimating about $4 million just for that, that upper reach. So reach two, Harrison to Casey Street. Um, again, we're, we're crossing Casey Street, three crossings of Silver Lake, uh, the Silver Lake line, three crossings of the Horseshoe Bend line, uh, utility reroutes, land purchases, and then those general construction activities again. Um, this, this reach, although longer than the first reach, is, is a little bit um, cheaper, but still at $2 million. Um, Casey to George, when we came down this far, now we're, we're actually in that reserved area that has been set aside um, for a possible <coughs> creek. Um, we have fewer crossings, so there's one crossing of George Street down there. There is some uh, land purchases and uh, the general construction activities, and we're, we're estimating about 1.4 million for that reach. Uh, George to Caw, um, we have to cross Kai Avenue, which is a major uh, thoroughfare in view, um, and then again, land purchases and, and those general construction costs, we're looking at probably 3.6 for that for that segment. And then from uh, Kai into Blacktail Creek, which is a shorter shorter span, um, there's there are some private properties in that area, and uh, you know, just the activities of uh, constructing a creek in this area. So we're looking at about a million for that uh, for that area. 
happening. I know this is small, uh, but I'm, I'm just gonna, I'll kind of point things out, uh, uh, throw out a few numbers to you. So overall cost uh, of the project is uh, estimated at about $12.5 million roughly. Um, we looked at a, basically because all of these plans are conceptual at this time, we don't have a lot of hard data to go on and we're just reviewing what could be done. Um, we did a plus or minus 25%, which could be $9 million to $15 million, $15.6 million. Um, the other thing that we, that we want to keep in everybody's mind is that this would um, require O&M over time. So we calculated O&M over a 25 year uh, period and looked at about $260,000 for um, operations and maintenance um, in addition to the construction costs that we talked about. So the things that went into those construction costs, uh, land purchases and lease agreements, um, earthwork, uh, we're, we're thinking that we'll probably run into maybe some contaminated soil in this area. So this is a cost to, for the soil to go to the repository. Um, we, there's, there's multiple different kinds of liners that could be used for this creek. What we did for cost estimation purposes is just costed out an HDPE liner. Um, then the idea behind the, the liner um, is, and the way that we costed it is, is that you would have the liner in the bottom um, of the creek channel and then you could fill on top of that with uh, gravels and rocks and what you would see in a normal stream channel and then you know revegetate the banks of it. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the costing uh, was for. Um, we looked at, uh, in this scenario, we looked at a 36 inch boring uh, underneath Harrison Avenue. So that's a cost of about um, uh, $700,000 just for that. Um, we looked at a couple different kinds of structures to get over or under utilities, um, drop structures, and uh, road crossings. So we've got costing in there for, for each of those crossings, and then crossing that existing Silver Bow Creek channel. Um, revegetation of the channel corridor, and, and then uh, up here, you know, mob, demob of construction equipment, taxes, bonding, insurance, health and safety plans, traffic control, um, and then utility reroutes. So there's quite a few, quite a few things to think about um, in, a, in a project like this, and um, the costs add up. Um, so that's, uh, that is a quick overview of the project, and um, if I can, I can take some questions now, if you've got questions on it. Thank you so much, Grace. Thank you. Is there an estimated